Welcome! This is a, an installation guide on how to install a Butterfess uh, inside Lux, Ubuntu or Linux Mint uh, system and use TimeShift for automatic snapshots. So, um, also whenever you do an apt operation. So basically this replicates what Ubuntu Focal Fossa is doing with ZSYS and ZFS but gives you more flexibility um, for instance manual partitioning and Butterfess is also a kernel module. Um, I have a written guide in the comments so you get all the commands and everything you need in there as well. So let's go ahead, um, click Try Ubuntu. Um, so I'm using a virtual machine here with four cores and eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, using this awesome script by Martin Wimpress, quick uh, quick emu, and uh, but I have done the same installation on my Dell laptops and also on the server. Okay, so let's um, first. Uh, I have a German keyword, so I need to change, of course, the um, input source right here. All right. Okay, we need to prepare uh, stuff before we actually run the um, installation. So let's open up a terminal um, and let's, uh, let's increase the font size. Hope that is fine. First, uh, let's check whether we are using a um, EFI. Um, okay, so this is this tutorial is about the the EFI installation. Um, okay because this is what most people use. Okay, let's run interactive sudo and let's have a look at the partitions. Okay, for you, this will be probably SDA or NVMe if you have an NVMe drive. For me, this is called VDE as I'm using a virtual machine and I want to install this on this drive over here. And I'm gonna do a very, very um, simple uh, partition layout. Uh, we will have a unencrypted EFI partition and a four gigabyte uh, partition for swap use. Uh, we will actually use encrypted swap. Um, and I will also show you how to uh, do a swap file with ButterFS so you have the more options there. And then um, we have the big, a large um, partition for our root file system, which we will format with ButterFS and um, encrypt it with Lux. Okay, and of course, if you have any other partitioning, that's fine with you. Um, boot will actually be inside the root partition, so we don't have to, we have actually a full disk encryption. Here. Okay, you can of course use um, Gparted for this. I just stick to, to this um, parted. Uh, I have nothing on the disk, so I'm, okay. So I'm creating the EFI partition, which will be this size. I'm creating the um, swap partition, about four gigabyte. And the rest is going to be my root file system. I do not need to create any other partitions for boot or home or stuff like that because ButterFS actually sets up uh, a sub volume for home and boot will live or reside inside the, the, the add sub volume, the root sub volume. Okay, let's have a look how this looks. Okay. Um, of of course, you can have a look at. Hello. Okay. Um, we can also do gparted. All right. So there's nothing on that yet. Okay. So this is the basic layout I have right now. Okay. Good, now let's create the Lux container for our ButterFS root file system. Here you have to take into account that um, Grub will decrypt this partition um, and look into the boot folder and then um, it will close it again. Um, and then we have to reopen it again. So there's, there are some tricks here. 
Grub um, still um, only supports Lux1 type encryption. So this is what the Manjaro uh, folks do in the architect as well. Um, there is a patch for Lux2, but it's not in this installer yet. Okay, so let's do crypt setup, Lux format type Lux1. And was called, yes, I'm fine. Use a very good password here. Okay, now let's map this to a device. Um, Lux open def VDA3 to, let's call this crypt data. All right, let's have a look into whether, okay, there it is. This will be, this will, um, I will use this uh, to, for, for my root file system. You could create a LVM here, a logical volume management and create stuff inside this uh, just, but for me, this is overkill. Uh, I will just use ButterFS on this. Um, it's important actually to, to format this already um, with ButterFest in the terminal and not let you be, um, the installer do this, um, otherwise it won't show up. Okay, there you go. Um, I'm using a virtual machine, it's not detecting my SSD, but I will assume that I'm actually running on an SSD because this is what I do on my laptops, okay? Good, now let's optimize some mount options for uh, SSDs and or, and or NVMEs um, and we have to change some configurations files here. So let's lose, uh, use gedit on user lib partman. Um, uh, um, let's first change the mount of ButterFS, okay. And here we will actually um, add some other mount options, okay. Mm, there you go. Um, as I'm pretending I'm on an SSD, I want uh, optimized mount options. For instance, I want SSD, which is uh, which adds SSD specific options for optimal use on an SSD or NVMe. No A time prevents frequent disk writes um, by instructing the, the kernel not to store the last access times of files and folders. Space catch um, allows ButterFS to to free space on the disk to make uh, the catching of blocks more efficient. Um, commit equals 120 um, is the time interval in which data is written to the file system. I, I took this from the Manjaro install, um, installer and I'm using compression, ZSTD, which uh, due to some Pharaonix benchmarks is quite, works quite well. Okay. Okay, so these are my mount options. I want to use them not only for add, the subvolume add, which will be my root, but I also want this for at home, which will be my home. Okay, so I'm just copying it over here. All right, let's save this. Oh, and then there's another file, the, which creates the FS tab. Um, I also need to add these options here. Let's, so let's go through this. Um, there's also this pass command, which is the FS check flag. ButterFS does not use FS check, so we don't need, need that. Okay, here's again at home, and I want those optimized mount options at uh, pass to zero at home. All right, pass to zero. And at the bottom, you also find this flag here, I do not need this. Okay, let's save this and exit. And let me think, I think now is time to run the Ubiquiti installer, but without the bootloader installation. We will do this uh, manually. Why? Because our boot, we don't have a, a extra boot partition. Okay, so English is fine. I do have a German keyboard. Let's do a whatever a minimal install. Okay, 
you can change uh, check boxes like you want like you used to something else is very important and here you can do all your partitioning that you need okay so on vda1 we will put the fe system partition vda2 will be used for swap unencrypted right now but we will change this uh, post install and here is my not vda3 is actually my partition which is encrypted and here i have decrypted it and mapped this device and this i want to use as butterfs let's format it again okay hit install now and you get an overview where it changes to disk check this very Carefully, maybe you want other partitions. Uh, maybe you have more disks, so you want to make sure that you uncheck other FE flags and stuff like that. Okay. All right. My name, some password. There you go. And now it is copying files. And let's um, come back to this when it is finished. I will pause the video. Okay, we are back. Um, the installation has finished, but do not reboot yet because we don't have, of course, a bootloader. So continue testing. And now there are a couple of things we need to do post install. Okay, first uh, let's uh, cheroot into our system. So let's first mount the sub volume at. Um, so sub with mount with options. The Butterfest sub volume add, which will be our slash, our root, and our optimized um, mount options. You don't really have to use this for your root, but just in case. compress ZSTV. And I have dev mapper crypt data, and I want to mount this to slash MNT. All right, now for n in proc sys dev etc. resolve conf. So proc sys dev uh, contains my devices, my um, basically everything is a file in Linux, all my hardware, and this is stored in those directories. And I want to mount these or bind this to um, my MNT folder as well. So uh dollar n um mnt slash dollar n done so this looks like come on looks like this okay and now i can cheroot into my system and now i'm actually in the new installation i did okay i let's have a look there it is Everything is set up cor nicely and correctly, okay? I have, um, sorry. Oh, I did not mount home yet, as you can see. So let's mount everything. And here you can see now the Effie partition is also mounted and the home as well. And now you can actually see, all right, there it is. Have a look at what the installer did I created two sub volumes one for add and one for home okay now um when we if we install the bootloader now reboot um grub will decrypt first my partition and then encrypt it uh, again and then decrypt it again so there will be a two passphrase uh, two prompts for for the passphrase and to circumvent this there's like a nice little workaround um using key files okay so I'm using um creating uh, a key file um and for this just random um of etc lux and let's call this key file os.key file lock size 496 uh, count equals whatever you can put in any numbers you want here Let's change permissions. This is very important to the user and the group, the other group. 
All right, and the file is on the read. Okay, and now I'm telling, um, I'm adding this um, key file uh, to be able to encrypt the Lux partition. It was VDA3 and Okay, entering my existing passphrase. Let's have a look whether this worked. Let's grab the key slots. And here you should, this is where my, this is my passphrase and this is now the key. Okay. Now we have to set some uh, more, uh, some better permissions and add the key file pattern, um, avoid some leaking material um, to the crisp setup um, in a DramaFS hooks. Okay, so um, let's do nano conf hook and here at the end add key file pattern must be re inside this directory and have the and have the ending key file all right and then nano tools um the configuration file and here i'm putting in their umask somewhere no i'm doing umask 0077 Okay, so this this avoids leaking the key material. Okay, now we have to create the crypt hub. Okay, so if you have a look, it's not here yet. And um, for this, we need the um, UUID of my Lux partition, which was VDA3, so this number over here. Okay, not dev mapper, not this one, but this one. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna create the crypt tab. Okay, and this is crypt data. Stick to the name you, you used uh, when you did crypt setup Lux open. This is important. Um, okay, UUID, and I'm uh, pasting. This number, in, I'm pasting this number in here. Okay, I copied it so I can paste. And I'm adding my Lux key in here as well. And this is Lux. Um, Butterfess has some, in kernel 5.6, there's some, some discard, asynchronous discard um, option, but we are still having kernel 5.4, so I'm not, using this card here, but I, we will enable FSTrim later on. Okay. All right, fine. Then swap. Okay, I have created a swap partition and there are many ways to create uh, an encrypted swap partition. There's a nice article on the Arch Wiki um, where you can, it depends on whether or not you use hibernation or suspend to disk. I do not use this, so Actually, I can do something very easily. Um, let's have again and let's find the UUID of my swap partition. It's over here. And I'm also using the crypt tab for this, okay? So I'm gonna create the crypt swap UUID. And I'm just opening it uh, with random keys, okay? So this will be um, def. Let me have a look at my notes. Okay, def u random swap offset uh, equals 124, cipher equals AES XTS lane 64, size equals 512. Okay. Have a look. Oh, this looks good. Let's 
Yes, I have her swap offset. Looks good. Okay. And that's it. Basically, um, well, not yet. I also have to adjust the FS tab. Okay, the swap was on this UUID. Now it is actually on dev mapper crypt. Um, what was the crypt swap? What did crypt swap, I guess. Other options are fine. Okay, if you want to create a swap file for some reason, um, there are some, some, you need to put this action into its own sub volume for use in ButterFS. Also, uh, if you want to create a RAID 1, um, swap files are not um, compatible with a RAID 1 or RAID 0 with ButterFS. Okay, but uh, let's create another swap file. Let's have both. Why not? Okay, so here I, I will show you also how to create um, new sub volumes. First, let's mount the top level root, which has always sub volume ID 5. Um, to the MNT inside my much root. Okay, so if you have now a look into this, we're looking from outside. Okay. These are the same folders, okay? And the same is true for this guy and my home, okay? So I have the same, um, it's mounted. Those are the sub volumes, add and at home, and the, the other one is, okay. And now let's create a new sub volume. Sub volume, create, mount, let's call this add. Swap, have a look. There it is, very easy to create swap volumes and I can, um, sub volumes will work more or less like, like directories. I can rename them, I can move them around, um, can uh, make snapshots, but we will use um, time shift for that. Okay, now let's uh, make sure that there is not another swap file in use. Uh, if there is, you can you should swap off and remove it, but I don't have one. Okay, and now we have to, prepare the, swap, the new swap file, which will be inside this new swap volume called swap file, um, set some attributes that the copy on the right does not work for this, um, add swap and swap file, all right, and property set mount add swap swap file no compression and let's allocate fl8 um i don't know four gigabytes to this file all right change permissions oh and let's make a swap of this. There you go. Now let's mount this sub volume to a uh, folder inside my system. So inside add, let's create swap, a directory. Okay. And now we need to actually, um, we have created this folder. And now we have to tell FS tab that um, so either you can edit this FS tab or go ahead and edit this FS tab. This is the same file, okay? This is what we, we did here. And um, let's, <coughs> okay, add another swap file, okay? This is my swap file. So first I have to map or mount from crypt data to swap. Um, this is a ButterFS file system. And the um, sub volume I want is sub volume at swap. And I do not want compression. Okay, zero, zero. Okay, so now we have taken the sub volume and mounted it to this directory slash swap. 
And now we are also telling the system or mounting this as a swap file on that. Okay, so there's a file called swap file, non swap. Um, yeah, zero, zero. Okay. Good. Now we don't need the top volume there anymore. So let's unmount it. Okay. Now, the last step is to actually install the FE bootloader, okay, um, and uh, use grub to unlock the deluxe type uh, one encrypted partition containing the boot folder. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go into grub. I also always like change this because I don't want quiet splash. I want to know everything is working fine. But the important line you have to add grub enable crypto disk equals y. Save this. And now let's install. I don't know if this is really necessary, but oh, this is here. This is, um, of course, necessary signed. Um, but also the kernel. Let's reinstall this as well. And Linux headers. Generic. Let's update the init ramfs, clear everything, but do this for all kernels. Okay, and let's, um, of course, drop install def VDA and update grub. Okay, there you go. All right, very quickly, let's check whether the key on my Lux partition is actually correctly stored. Files. Yeah, crypt data key. Okay. All right. Now we can exit the cheroot and we can cross our fingers and reboot. Okay. And here there is one pass phrase prompt from Grab. Okay. If you you have only one chance to enter this password, otherwise you have to reboot. Um, this will take a bit longer than without these encryption steps. Okay, and here you are. You are, you can change. Um, okay, let's see. Mounting the root file system. Now it is searching for the, or using the, the Lux key. And there we are. We have a full disk encryption um, system with RFS and now we will check some stuff and set up time shift to automatically do snapshots whenever we do anything with apt. Okay, whatever. Okay, so let's See what, if everything looks fine, let's have a look at the FS tab, crypt data, okay. Crypt data home, crypt swap, okay, and we have a swap file. All right, the crypt tab looks also all right. Um, let's have a look at 
the mount stuff. Everything is mounted. Let's actually do this. And let's have a look where is my or grab that mapper. Okay, so root is has all those nice mount options and the sub volume is at home is at home and has the same options here. And this also has these options. Um, of course, the mount um, options are always the same. Okay, now, oh, of course, we created a swap file and we have a, an encrypted swap partition. That's fine, it's overkill. I usually just use the swap partition. And let's have a look at file system show. There you go. Um, okay. And let's have a look at my sub volumes. Sub volumes list. No. Sub volume list add at home and add swap. And of course, you can add more sub volumes um, if you want. Uh, the nice thing about subvolumes is if uh, you take a snapshot of at, it won't take a snapshot of, of at home or at swap. Okay? Uh, so you have to do another snapshot then of at home, for instance. Okay, um, so we pr should probably now add update, add upgrade, and stuff like that. I will skip this. And show you now um, how to install time shift and um, time shift auto snap apt and grab butterfast okay so let's install time shift now let's hello set everything up we use butterfast all right Whatever you want, click here. Boot will actually take like 10 or 20 minutes into uh, after you boot it. I always include at home um, because uh, when I restore with time shift, I can check mark whether I want my home directory or not, or my home sub volume or not um, restored as well. Most of the times you don't want this. Okay. And bam, we have created our first snapshot and I can always come back to this point in time. This is so cool about snapshotting and time shift. Okay, um, now let's um, install uh, also time shift auto snap apt, which will run a time or which will make a time shift snapshot whenever I do anything with apt. Okay, so this is basically the same what Zsys in uh, Ubuntu does. Okay, for this, um, go to my GitHub and it's called Timeshift Auto Snap Apt Git. Um, oh, I do not want to do this as root. Okay. Timeshift Auto Snap. Apt. Good. It's basically a fork of a of a utilities um, for Arch, which I just um, adapted for Debian based use. Um, I never I can't remember the exact installation process, so let's head over to the GitHub page. Time shift. Okay. It's basically just a bash script and uh, this is the way you install it. You, um, it, it will create a hook whenever time shift, uh, whenever app is run, then uh, it will run this, this little bash script. Um, you can also make some configuration settings. Um, as I have boot on my 
Inside my, 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 my file system, I do not want to rsync this to boot backup, but I do want to have a backup of my FE partition as well in, in the file system. Okay, um, that's fine. All right. And now I also want to have butter, uh, grab butter first. This will create me my nice um, uh, menus. Okay, so, okay. In my grab menu, so git clone HTTP. Uh, git. Okay, this is actually also a utility written for Arch, but it is it works just fine with uh, Debian based systems. Bam. Okay, and now let's also make some changes in the configuration there. Um, the configuration file is found here. Um, and usually those are not Arch Linux snapshots, but for instance, Linux or Ubuntu or Linux snapshots. Okay. Okay, and now let's see whether everything works or not. Let's run sudo time shift orders uh, apt. We'll create a volume, all right, and this will also run grub butter first. Okay, and so for instance, if you install, I don't know, um, some package with apt, it will automatically create snapshots. Um, Okay, so you, you can set up how many snapshots are kept. So the default is three. It will create and delete all the snapshots and grab other fast will actually make grab entries for you. Um, okay, so um, the, the last, just one tweak as I have just forgotten. Um, let's enable FS trim timer because I'm using the SSD and I don't have this card yet. So let's see how this works. Reboot now. Okay, enter the passphrase. And now when the um, grab menu comes up, we should have our snapshots. Okay, there you go, Linux snapshots, and you can decide, all right, I want this snapshot with this kernel or this kernel. And then you use this snapshot as your root file system. Okay, so in case anything breaks, you're, you can use time shift or whatever to restore your system. You can boot into these different snapshots. Um, you have all the flexibility time shift gives you. Just hit restore and it will restore everything for you just in a couple of seconds, okay? Um, we can actually see that we are running now. Um, oh no. Uh, um, volume. No, show. There you go. And here you can see that currently you're using this snapshot here or this sub volume for your root. Okay. Um, one more thing, time shift automatically mounts the top level um, the top where is it? Um, I, of course, I, I mounted the, the snapshot. Okay, so let's read it now. Let's go into our actual add folder, or sorry, sub volume.
Okay, so what time shift does it creates um why does it mount everything? Anyways, actually I thought time shift mounts everything. Let's have a look. There. Should be in here. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, so this is actually your, your top volume uh, root file system. There's at, there's at home, and in this time shift, butterfest, oh, there are all your snapshots. Okay. So this is where we boot it into. And you can move them around. You can uh, do a butterfest sub volume snapshot of at. Um, of course, let's call this my cool snapshot. Have to be root for this, okay? And then you all you like have another snapshot. Okay, so if add, you, you boot into a live system and you simply move add to my bad add and move my cool snapshot to, okay, so boot into the live system to, I don't know, add old, something like that, and then you boot my cool snapshot back at add, restart, and you're back. So you can also do this manually or with time shift. Um, just hit restore um, and everything's fine. Okay, so I hope this was useful to you. Um, let me know if you have any questions or I did something wrong um, in the comments and have a good day.